Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information you didn't even know you needed. Today's topic is all about what to do before handing over a device to your children, um, and especially what to do even before you purchase said device. I have so many parents asking me all of these questions after they've already purchased the device or even after they've already given the device to their child. And sometimes they wanna take back a lot of the things that they've either purchased or done to help make the device a little more safer for your kids. So I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before handing over a device to your child. First things first, you need to decide what kind of device you're going to purchase. For the most part, we're talking about cell phones here. So do you wanna get an Android, an iPhone, or a kid's safe smartphone? Um, I have comparisons for iPhone and Android, different parental control settings. I also have a breakdown of various kids safe smart devices. So check out those videos if you're unsure what to purchase. Uh, I will say right off the bat that a better option for your child is an Android as opposed to an iPhone iPhone's operating system makes it more difficult for third-party parental control software to access the parts they need to access in order to monitor the device properly. So uh, Android is the better choice for a teen, but all of the advice I've got from here on out is carrier agnostic, device agnostic. This is all things that you should do no matter what kind of device you're handing over to your child. So the first thing you'll need to decide is how you're going to protect it. There's three different categories that I break down in this video about monitoring, management, and content filtering. So monitoring is generally done by a third party application where it's going to tell you all the things that are being searched for, texted, all of these different things. That is what monitoring will do. Management is basically setting up time limits and setting up time frames that the device is available. So most devices actually have uh, built in parental controls that can do some of these time limit things. So iPhone has screen time, which is from from iOS, uh, it's built right into the operating system. You do have to have an Apple device in order to manage an Apple device. There is no um, application that can be installed on a parent's Android device to manage an iPhone. Android is the opposite. If you have an Android, um, or if your child has an Android and you have an iPhone, Google Family Link works on Android or on an iPhone, so you don't need to have the same kind of device your child does if they have an Android. So you can set up Google Family Link to do the management portion of that device. Now, kids safe smartphones, they have their own parent portals that you can log into and manage the device that way. That also actually covers the monitoring portion as well and the content filtering because these are kids safe smartphones. So it handles all three. Um, so then the next thing you need to worry about is filtering. Filtering can take place on a device level. So you can have the um, built-in parental controls setting up some of that content filtering, or you can set up the filtering through your Wi-Fi. So if your Wi-Fi router has built-in parental controls, then you can set those up. Your Wi-Fi router is kind of the gateway to your whole house, and you don't have to use the router that your internet service provider gives you. So you can purchase a router like the Griffin, which is the one I recommend, and you can install that and use the parental controls through that. So now that we've got the phone that we're going to buy them and we know how we're going to monitor it, we know how we're going to manage it, and we know how we're going to filter it. What is next? You want to talk to your kids about what is happening and what the expectations are for them to have this device. I recommend setting up a technology contract. This is a free one that I have available on my website, familytechzone.com. And I'll just kind of just go through some of the different features of the tech contract. So at the beginning, you're establishing kind of ground rules. So you're letting them know, 
this is our device. You have permission to use it. You know, most likely your child did not purchase this device on their own. And so this is our device. We pay for the service unless your child, you know, at 12 years old is paying for their own cell phone service. I highly doubt that. Um, so just kind of setting that groundwork. This is our device. We're paying for the service. You are just allowed to use it as long as these restrictions are in place. So um, another thing I like kids to kind of understand is that nothing you post online is ever private. Even if you think it's private, even if you told your friend not to tell anybody or not to screenshot it or anything like that, nothing you do online is private. And so nothing, not only will I as a parent be able to see everything that you do online and monitor the content on the device, but someone else can always see what you are doing as long as it's online. So there is no privacy. And I really stress that to my kids when I'm handing over a device saying, you know, there is no online privacy. So don't have any expectation that you will have privacy online. So, and nothing, not only is it not nothing private, Everything you post or message is also permanent. You know, somebody can take a screenshot, someone can do something, and that will live forever. You can't take it back once you've put it out there. So that is really important also for kids to understand when they're getting this new device. Um, and then discuss what your definition of appropriate is. Because if you say, okay, don't do anything inappropriate, they're like, okay, well, that's pretty broad because what's inappropriate for my friend might not be inappropriate for me. So discuss what you think is inappropriate and come to that conclusion together with your child. Um, and then make sure they understand parental controls will be installed on your device. And that is a non-negotiable. You kind of, you try to get around the parental controls or anything like that, you will lose access to your device. So that's kind of the ground rules that you set up at the beginning. The second thing you want to have in your technology contract is what they agree to do. And you know, you can change this or um, do whatever you want and kind of create one on your own. I really recommend creating one on your own. You can use this as a template and then create one on your own. So um, some of the things that I've got in here is you agree to never change the passcode on your phone without letting me know what the new code is. Uh, when you see something inappropriate, you will let me know as soon as you can. Um, if you searched for it, you will let me know that as well. Um, that you will have the phone lock every night at this time and unlock automatically at this time. And the mornings and weekends can be, di or on the weekends or when school is out, you can change this up. Um, and so you can have different time frames for those days off. Um, <laughs> if it falls in the toilet, smashes on the ground or vanishes into thin air, you are responsible for the replacement costs. Uh, you have to earn the money, likely be without your device as you save up. Um, you will not text, email, message, or post anything through this device you would not say in person. Uh, do not involve yourself in conversations that are hurtful to others. Uh, do not text, email, message, or post anything someone that you would not say out loud to their parents if their parents are in the room. Censor yourself. Uh, you will turn it off, silence it, or put it away during family times, while driving in a restaurant, at the movies, or while speaking with another human being. You will not send or receive pictures or videos of your body without clothes or anyone else's body without clothes on. Uh, you will not try to uninstall or otherwise circumvent the parental controls on your device. You will use your time wisely on the device. If you have chores or homework to do, you will do that first and then use your device. Uh, you will only friend and communicate privately with people you know in real life. This one is a huge one to make sure they agree to. You will never post any personal identifiable information in a place that is publicly accessible, like online chat forum or a public social media post. Um, so these are the things kind of your child should agree to. And you can take whatever out you need to or add things that you would need to as well. What I really encourage though, is what you will agree to do. So they have all of these rules and restrictions what can they expect from you? Um, and so I agree to 
so this is you as a parent, I agree to inform you about anything that was flagged as concerning so we can discuss the situation and not jump to conclusions. So if I see something as I'm monitoring that I'm like, ooh, I need to talk to my child about this, uh, I'm not gonna jump to conclusions right away. I'm going to say, hey, this is what I saw. Can you give me some context? And if it is a problem, then we can go from there. But I'm not gonna jump to conclusions and that's what I agree to. Um, I agree to not dig deeper into your online content that is than is necessary to keep you safe. I'm not going to read all of your conversations with your friends. Mostly, I don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to punish you or overreact when you let me know about something before I find out. So if there's a situation and there's some bullying going on or something happened and you came across something inappropriate, if you come and tell me first, um, yeah, I'm not going to overreact and you're probably not going to get as severe of a punishment as if you had not told me and I found out on my own. Um, I also will practice what I preach and also put my devices away during family times while driving in a restaurant at the movies and while speaking with another human being, including you. So I think this one's a really important one. So if my child comes to me and talks to me about something and I'm just standing on my phone, oh, uh-huh, 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 that shows them that they can do the same thing and I don't want them to do the same thing. So if my child or any other person comes and talks to me, I put my phone upside down, I put it on the table or in my pocket or in my purse or things like that. Um, and that's a good habit to get into and a good habit to model for your children. Um, and then I agree to approve apps and time extension requests in a timely manner when it is reasonable to do so. Obviously, I'm not going to approve a time request when I'm driving somewhere or anything like that. So um, all of these things are, um, are things that I promise to do. And so a violation of this agreement will result in the loss of access to the device or specific apps for a period of time determined by the severity of the violation. Um, and so now they understand exactly what is going to happen if they break these rules. They know they can come to me and talk about anything that is concerning. It just brings the family to a more healthy place with the technology and helps you establish some really good habits in your home about technology use. So those are the things that you should be aware of before you hand over a device to your child. Hopefully you learned something. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. Um, follow me on Instagram. I do answer direct messages on Instagram every day. Um, I will also post answers to questions on my Instagram stories with a tag um, question of the day. So uh, go ahead and check me out over there. Subscribe here because that really helps out my channel and I will see you next time.